let me paint a picture for you. Uh, the Israelites are uh, listening and waiting with anticipation because they have built the, uh, the tabernacle for the Lord and they are awaiting the, the grand opening. Everything is set up. And as you can see here, we have a model of the tabernacle and uh, everything is set up and they are, they are waiting. And we find in Exodus 40 that God commands to take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it and all its furnishings and it will be holy. God commands the whole tabernacle and all the instruments, all the furnishings to be anointed with the anointing oil for it to be set apart, for it to be made holy. Why? Because this is a dwelling place where God will meet with the priests and the high priest. God will meet with his people. It is a sacred place. Some people would call this, some people call this a pulpit. Some people would call this a sacred desk. There's nothing sacred about this desk. But it is anointed and set apart for God's work. Therefore, it is sacred. The seats that you sit on here in the church building, there's nothing sacred about it unless it is anointed and consecrated to do the work of God. Provide you seating so that you may worship the Lord. Therefore, it is set apart for God. This building, nothing special, but when it is anointed and consecrated for God, he makes it holy, and therefore we can worship him. Not only that, all of us, God calls his saints for those who have put our trust and faith in Jesus Christ, and he anoints us with the Holy Spirit. Amen? He sets us apart. Therefore, you are holy vessels, holy agents of God's grace, holy agents and ambassadors of God's love. Do you know the value of who you are? You are cherished and loved by a God who loves you with an everlasting love. So the people are, are, are um, uh, watching and in anticipation, and they are going to do everything that the Lord has commanded them to do. Anoint and consecrate. And if God says it is going to be holy, then guess what? It's going to be holy. I thought about this deeply this week. I thought about the holy and anointed one, Jesus Christ, a lot. When he faced people who had demons running their lives, when he faced people who had leprosy and blind eyes and those people who were lame and who were deaf, when he approached them, their sickness their boundness, their lameness, their deafness, or their leprousnessness, <laughs> and that goes on, right? Their sinfulness did not transfer to Jesus. Rather, his holiness was transferred to them. Jesus, the holy and anointed one who walked this earth, showed us what an anointed life looks like. It looks like freedom. Jesus was not bound by anything. He was free to love, free to minister. He was free to pray. He was free to party with his friends, sitting around the table. I mean, when I say party, I don't know where your mind goes, but it's just a, a table <laughs> with food and, and having conversation and fellowship. Yes. And he ate with prostitutes. He ate with tax collectors. Their sins did not transfer to him, but he made them holy. Hallelujah. He delivered them. He healed them. He set them free. And I think the disciples had a whale of a time walking with Jesus for three years. I think Jesus, not only the healer, the deliverer, the best preacher that the world has ever known, I think he also had a great sense of humor. Do you think 
it's joyful to walk with Jesus? It is to me. There is a joy in my heart because there's a river of life flowing out of me. And I think Jesus probably told the best jokes. Now, never negative to anyone, not, not cynical, but I think he had this godly joy. For he is God. Amen? I was telling my staff, from the Bible, who was the shortest man from the Bible? And they're like, Zacchaeus. And I said, no, Nehemiah. I know. But if you love your pastor, you'll laugh at his jokes. I think Jesus was just filled with joy. He walked with his disciples, he taught them, he trained them, he was able to make them laugh, and sometimes he would just show them by, the, by his obedience to the Father's will that there was this love relationship that they would see with their eyes and just feel. He would see the tears coming down from Jesus' eyes when he had lost a dear friend. He would, they would see the grief. Yes, this is the life of of the anointed one, Jesus, who walked this earth, anointed, set apart, and fully on mission 